in the World Test Championship in a bid to not lose points. Facing Australia, Pakistan neutralized all of its pace tracks. The King Ramiz Raja actually coming out and admitting this to the media. And when all of it ultimately backfired with Australia pulling off a historic victory in Pakistan, the King suddenly found himself cornered. And it is there that we start the next chapter. If we take PSL to auction model, increase our purse, then we'll see who goes to play the IPL over the PSL. This was supposed to be just another throw a statement, tangled in front of media to distract them from the Australia debacle. But what the king had imagined to be a molehill turned out to be a mountain. Now normally he would have just ignored it, but as he was soon to head out to the annual meeting of ICC, where he would require BCCI support for his quadrangular tournament, the king took the magnanimous step of pushing the entire blame on the media. I was misquoted, he said. We will bring the auction model, but I was misquoted on the other part. Now, how exactly do you misquote a word for word statement? Nobody knows. But for now, the king was ready. Ready to mount a glorious assault on the ICC. Press briefings were called, private contacts phoned. How long can we allow ourselves to be dictated by politics, he asked. Why don't we give more of the fans what they want, he asked. Finally, as he was about to embark on a historic journey, the Imran Khan government collapsed. Just so you know, the king was the personal candidate of Imran Khan, put in place by making the last chairman forcibly resign. So in a night, the king had lost all of his political backing. There were a few hopes that a positive outcome in ICC could bolster his standing with the new government. <laughs> but then the ICC tabled the proposal, discussed it, and then deeming it not worthy to be voted upon, simply shelved it. So humiliation on the international front, a disastrous run at home, and absolutely no political support. Everybody was expecting an abdication of the throne at this point. After all, nearly each and every chairman before him had chosen to live with dignity before getting kicked out in disgrace. But this was the king we are talking about. How could he ever leave so easily? A 22 minute long video was posted on his personal YouTube channel, where he went in extreme detail talking about himself. क्या है कि मुश्किलें इतनी पड़ी मुझ पे कि आसान हो गई मैंने एक जो चेंज देखा है इन पांच छह महीनों में एक कंसिस्टेंसी मैंने देने की कोशिश की थी और यही मैंने इस इस टीम से कहा था मेरी ट्वीट थी कि मैंने उन्हें कहा है कि मैं समझता हूं आपसे मैंने पहले बात कि मैं अगर मैं समझता हूं तो मैंने जो कि मैं और मेरा यू you नो know, मैं ये मैंने आज एक एक मां दो छोटे बच्चों के साथ आके मुबारक देती है कि जी देखें इन्होंने दोबारा से क्रिकेट देखनी शुरू कर दी तो आपका बहुत शुक्रिया या मेरे हस्बैंड पहले फुटबॉल देखते थे वो भी क्रिकेट देखते हैं तो आपका बहुत शुक्रिया and as if that self grandization was not enough he also named the culprit behind the australia debacle the culprit the fans of course fans who were unnecessarily making a fuss about the pitches but it wasn't even entirely their fault you know they just hadn't seen a lot of test cricket they all have t20 mentalities it is the previous board to blame they didn't show enough test cricket to them but as luck would have it though king had found himself in a unique situation by now the new government that had come in was a coalition government between many disparate parties for the longest time couldn't even decide who would lead them since cricket was going to be at the lowest priority at the moment in other words for now the king was going to be ignored knowing full well though he would need to do something substantial to solidify his place in the new government and so he launched his next big venture an ipl for kids so i have a question here if there is a country whose economy is on the verge of collapse where inflation and corruption has gutted the middle class what happens when you start paying kids substantial money to play t20 well everybody will play just that right completely ignoring the technique building years of cricket now guess what happens when such half big players try to play international cricket <laughs> yep so this was quickly dubbed as a move that would destroy pakistani cricket getting backlash from each and every conceivable corner still the king remained undeterred forcefully pushing the idea down the pcb's throat he demanded the first season of pjl was to be held within the next 6 months but before that the political pressure would have gagged most of the chirping mouths this wasn't the imran khan government anymore and though the new one would not oppose him they surely wouldn't support him so as the situation quickly caught fire with calls of the king's firing quickly gaining strength there was nobody to tamp it down the media starting to dig up all the dirt that had been kept buried till now and soon they hit the jackpot now normally pcb chairman used to post their expenses publicly on a website apparently this year though the king had instructed them to not publicize those expenses now most of the time even if it were published it would have just flown under the radar but the more 
you try to hide something, the more eyes it is going to attract. And so it didn't take long for the expenses to leak, prompting the king to himself take the podium and explain. My salary as the PCB chairman is zero. I have only spent 2.5 rupees on my official tools as of yet. Well, it was true. The king did not take any salary. The expense number, however, that was a bit off. About 38 lakh rupees off. The king had been through upwards of 40 lakh rupees in just six months. What was even worse was that due to COVID, the king had next to no foreign trips. Meaning the paragon of virtue who wanted the world to follow his austerity. He had himself spent more than 6.5 lakh rupees per month staying in Pakistan. And as people started clamoring for a proper explanation, it was met with an announcement. PCB was increasing players' salaries and pension. Furthermore, they would also provide compensation to players for them to not play foreign T20 leagues to avoid burning them out. Given the timing of all of this, people saw it for what it was. A blatant attempt to buy support. But at that time, doing this was like building a sand castle to try to stop a tsunami. And so the king, now thoroughly pushed into a corner, decided to do the unthinkable. Backstab his Shandar captain. The king declared in a press conference, since he got booted out, Imran Khan has cut off all communications with me. The political doublespeak here is amazing. If the king would have cut off communications, that would mean that he is someone who changes his stance whenever the wind shifts. But if Imran Khan is the one cutting him off, doesn't it mean that now he doesn't have an option? Now he has to side with the new PM. So in the same interview, he tried his best to ingratiate himself with the new PM. But the new government in response, they said, eh, you created this media monster, you deal with it. And so it was that the once beloved child of media, now in frustration, started lashing out at them. I feel nowadays talking to this media is a waste of time. You people are the ones creating uncertainty. You are the people wanting me gone. Once going as far as to shutting down all questions from a reporter. Well, he could do that to reporters. But what was to come next? It was so bitter that it would cause the entire PCB to wrench their guts out. Pakistan Junior League from its inception was the very definition of a dumpster fire. To start off, due to the short notice, they just couldn't find an empty space in the calendar. Finally having to put it in direct competition with the World Cup. This naturally made it so that no foreign player would be interested in joining something like this. The PCB being forced to announce a prize of 1 crore to any foreign player that may be ready to join the teams as a mentor. But soon enough, that wasn't going to be a problem anymore. Because within a few weeks, they would be forced to abandon the franchisee team model altogether. Why? Well, nobody was interested in buying a team. The bids that had come in were so low that they didn't even match up to the proposed base values. And with no big name being interested, no media company was ready to broadcast it. So, a dumpster fire. But this was the king's brainchild after all. How could he just let it die? After all, everything else that he had proposed had made a tragic, miserable end. So on he rushed, brute forcing through each and every issue. Nobody willing to spend money, PCB will pay them directly. No TV channel interested, we will sell off the rights for pennies on the dollar, foregoing even a possibility of a profit. A board with no money, who was on the verge of bankruptcy according to the king. They had just in the last few months, increased salaries, increased pension, and was now funding an entire league where it was paying kids much more than what professional cricketers were being paid, racking up a total bill of $950 million, causing a net loss of $800 million, and all of it to satisfy the whims of one single person. But this time, the king had done one cardinal mistake. In Pakistan, you can easily destroy players' careers, betray fans' expectations, make a mockery of the rule. The one thing you cannot do is touch the profit margin of rich people. And this time, the king, unhappy with the amount of media attention PGL was getting, forcibly pushed the PSL auction back, shelving the thing that was actually earning them money for a potential sinkhole, earning the ire of the entire PSL team ownership people with money, power, and political pull. So suddenly, the pressure on the king was ratcheted to such an extent, the cracks had begun to show. As was evident, when on the eve of the Asia Cup final, on losing to Sri Lanka, the king actually got into a fight with an Indian journalist, even trying to snatch the reporter's phone from his hand. The reporter's crying. He had dared to ask, will the Pakistani public be unhappy with the loss? So now it was clear, all avenues had been blocked for the king, all experiments failed, and absolutely no prospect left. Hence he decided to go back to the one method that had always worked. When you get hit by the media, go India, India, India. Let's play the pattern game once again, shall we? 
specifically see the question and then see the answer when asked about the loss in the finals india should then have been severely criticized for not reaching the finals on losing a home t20 series to england india could not even make it to the final were they executed when asked about the upcoming world cup credit must be given to this pakistani side they have defeated a 1 billion dollar indian team in the last world cup and this one was really special he didn't even shy from bad mouthing his own world cup winning team saying his old team had never managed to done what babar as am has done now india has started respecting us after we defeated them last year now there was a backlash no doubt people including ashwin coming out and saying respect doesn't come with wins and defeats comes in the way you are made but none of this was the point the point was that he had once again distracted everyone by taking india's name nobody was talking about the king's blunders now what he had once again seemed to have gotten away scot free but this time though something was to be different because within 10 days of that statement jay shah bcci secretary and the president of the asian cricket commission the same person under whom this commission had awarded pakistan the hosting rights for next year's asia cup he now came out and said we will not travel to pakistan we will play the asia cup at a neutral venue now i have no proof that this was a tit for tat affair all i'm saying is the timing of this announcement is amazing doesn't it as you can imagine this declaration set off a storm in pakistan the next one month would be spent by the king dredging up this topic at every conceivable opportunity using each and every threat imaginable from we will take this up in the appropriate forums to we are calling for an emergency acc meeting we are considering quitting acc all the way up to we are going to pull out from the 2023 odi world cup either ways the king's words had been converted into a point of political contention by jay shah all that bragging before becoming the news around the king's neck and the king recognizing this quickly went into damage control mode the same person who one year ago had told babar azam team selection is not your job you just go and play was now saying even though i could have interfered in the team selection i never did my philosophy is simple make your captain strong on one hand he would say that there is no pressure on the team while on the other hand i have told my team they need to win i just can't stand if they lose all of it leading up to that loss after which following a simple tweet the king disappeared there was no trace of him to be found after pakistan lost to zimbabwe just another small tweet after a close shave against afghanistan but then suddenly as soon as pakistan clawed its way to the finals the king was down there in melbourne in front of each and every camera conducting intensive meetings with the team meetings in which he would tell them in extreme detail about how he had also won a world cup Now, even though Pakistan went on to lose the finals, it had brought the king just enough time, time to try to redeem himself from the Australia Test debacle because the English Test tour was about to start. And as the king had previously promised, all pitches were going to be completely ready by then. And shockingly, he seemed to have kept his word. In the Qaeda Azam Trophy being played right before the series, the Rawalpindi pitch had just one in five scores go about 300, which even prompted the king to declare that we are expecting much more sporting tracks against England. So I have given just one message to the players: they have to. to beat england after all why couldn't they the english team that they were facing now had none of their main pace bowlers their main pace lineup robinson leach and a 40 year old james anderson while for pakistan a good performance here would mean that they could still qualify for the wtc final so everything pointed towards a pacers heaven pitch that would heavily favor this pakistani team and when the pitch was unveiled it was so flat that england broke a 112 years old record for runs scored on day 1 rawal pindi pitch was once again given a d minute point by the icc the king once again having to call for a emergency press conference where he started a complaint fest We are in the dark ages for pitches in Pakistan. We don't control how the pitches are made. If you know so much, you only go and play. Finally ending it on. We are still 5 years away from making good pitches in Pakistan. In other words, you will be getting similar pitches throughout this series. What happened next could be only described as uh, karma getting even with him as that England team refusing to be daunted by this pitch got the ball to reverse swing in the last 90 minutes of the test, taking out the entire Pakistani batting in that time. winning the first test in the process now after the match when the pakistani captain went we just didn't get the pitches we want everybody had gotten ready to skewer up the ground stuff but then came the news just before the test match the ground stuff had been ordered convert that pure pace pitch into a spin friendly one and the result we got this well it was still fine they wanted to bank on spinners done in the next match they got a perfect spinning track the debuting spinner even took 11 wickets and yet 
English pacers somehow found a way to take five wickets for just 38 runs on the last day. Once again, crushing Pakistan at home. Pakistan now stood on the verge of getting whitewashed in their own house. A first in Pakistan's long cricketing history. And what did the king have to say about this? Well, uh, credit has to be given. Not to the England team though, to Pakistan. If there was any other team, they would have had a very negative mindset by now. But look, look at how positive our players are. And I still feel, had the umpire's decision of Shaquil gone the other way, we would have still won the match. Well, all such doubts and what-ifs, they were soon to be wiped off as English spinners ripped through the entire Pakistani batting in the third test, handing them a historic humiliation. Finally, prompted the PM to fire the king from his throne. For anyone else, this would be completely understandable. The worst defeat in Pakistan's history, leading to its leader being fired. It makes sense, right? But in the king's eyes, this was a joke. To adjust just one person, as the new chairman said he, they had to change the entire constitution. It has been made as if a messiah has come. I was not even allowed to go to the office and collect my belongings. These people have just come to enjoy themselves and get the publicity. They know nothing about cricket. What happened to me is just political victimization. Although I have no political links with anyone, I was appointed based on my cricket and administrative credentials. Administrative credentials of not even heading a district cricket club in the last 18 years. He ended his video on the ever hopeful note of this committee will eventually destroy the environment in the Pakistani dressing room. The next few weeks had the exile king going after each and every person that he feel had wronged him. From Akib to Vasim Akram to Wakar Yunus to even Mohammad Amar. Even I mean, India wasn't spared a jab, saying how India couldn't digest him being the chairman. Finally though, after a week of this constant barrage, the PCB had had enough. They threatened to take legal action against the ex-king and though this firestorm went on for a few more days, on 6th of Jan 2023, the ex-king would demand, PCB should start paying me my retired player's pension. PCB agreed under the condition that Rami signs the requisite code of conduct, which states the cricketer is bound to not criticize the PCB in the media. And uh, that was that for the next three months. After the agreement was signed, the king went silent. The Messiah of Pakistani cricket, the only hope for a bright future, the all-knowing perfectionist had suddenly gone silent for seemingly a total sum of 1,54,000 per month. Now I would like to end this video on a more uh, recent note. Since April, Rambo seems to have found his voice again for some reason. And given the turmoil in Pakistani politics right now, who knows, I may even get to make the third part of this series one day. Till then though, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a good day. Thank you for watching.